Today on Chasing the Sun, something a little different. These redfish are excited. Is a picture really worth a thousand words? This is going to be a different kind of show here. This is going to be a lot of fun. And there goes the triggerfish. I'm not saying it's a triggerfish, but it's always a triggerfish. When we review this footage, the amount of information that we can process just by looking at this little clip is amazing. Your standard three feet of 20 pound test with a yes. uni knot holding together on your medium light That's rod. That's a 3,000 reel, seven and a half foot rod. Yep. Made long cast, 10 pound power pro. Today we'll analyze Justin and Travis as they look at a fishing scene to determine what they see. But that is a big old line fish. I don't get close to that thing. What do you see? You see that bend in that rod? Yeah. So that shows that man actually has an idea on how to win. Yeah. Oh, he's all over. Oh, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. I don't want to sit around and talk about these too much because that school's sitting right under us. Can you see what they see? Chasing the Sun is brought to you by Holiday Inn Resort, Panama City Beach. Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Dulce Vida Tequila. Grundings, we are fishing. And by Pirates Cove Marina, you enjoy the gulf, we'll take care of the rest. It's an age old saying that a picture's worth a thousand words. Basically, it means the same image will be described differently by each person who sees it. Unless, of course, you're a fishing guide, then you only see the world one way, underwater. This is going to be a different kind of show here. This is going to be a lot of fun. So when we review this footage, which we're doing right now because we have a big Or any footage. We see it completely different than the producers see this. Yeah, I mean, it's like light and Yeah, focus. how does it sound and is this, yeah, does the shot look clear or whatever? Like, for us, I'm like, oh, I remember that bite, you know? I remember what jig I was using. Like, I, I mean, remember every detail. Even if it's not it. us watching ourselves, it could be anything. I mean, we can pretty much figure out, you know, the bass guys are fishing. You can be like, yeah. oh, I know that reel, I know that rod. And he's probably running 40 pound braid. Yeah. Does he have a leader on there? I'm not exactly. Sure. So the amount of information that we can process just by looking at this little clip is amazing. To me, it's kind of like, you know, when you hear a song that you hadn't heard in like, 20 10, years. 15, 20 years. But you remember it. You remember every word to it. That's exactly how this is for us in fishing because these are the boats that we rigged out. This is the tackle that we put together. And when we see these clips, it's funny how all those memories come back. All right, let's see what we're doing. I love this. The first eye pilots that I ever fished with. Really? Yep. There we go. We're fishing in West Bay. Yep. Your standard three feet of 20 pound test with a yes. uni knot holding together on your medium light That's rod. That's a 3,000 reel, seven and a half foot rod. Yep. Made long cast, 10 pound power pro. So. Same rod from earlier. Mm, that's a newer reel. It is. Shimano. Oh, that's a. Uh, Sustain. Yeah, it is. It's a sustain and on those same rods. Though, so you're you letting mine rip out of that thing, so. Oh, you know what? That's gotta be running. a drop shot. Yeah, right? I was gonna say it's gotta be your little chicken rig. Yeah, yeah. The Justin chicken rig. You and see the bite? And there goes the trigger fish. <laughs> nah. I'm not saying it's a trigger fish, but it's always a trigger fish. Whatever it is, he feels like the right size. A good tug, but not too much. Oh yeah, that's a. Three pound beetle. Right. Big Vermilion Yeah, He ate on the bottom. Triggerfish usually eat on yeah. the way down. Just a slow, steady bite, too. Just kind of. Mm -hmm. You can tell when you make it down past the triggerfish because that pilcher does not last long on the bottom here. Oh, no, it's not. What is this? Oh, a little scamp? Grandpa, wrong. You wrong. It's a little baby scamp. It think. is a baby scamp. How? How close we have them is? things everywhere. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, he's all over. Oh, he yeah. is. <laughs> Holy I'm man. looking at the tail yeah. and how the tip's moving. It's definitely a jack style. Yeah. See, thump, thump, thump. Look at that pretty fish. You don't want to do a whole lot of. Oh, yeah, look, there's a buddy right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
You actually made pretty pretty quick work of him, Justin. I'm surprised. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a groaning. Yeah. Holy cow. Nice work. And I tell you what, he's putting every bit of pressure you can on there. Golly, look at the tip, it's even like straight. It's been so far. Yeah. Well, keep that head up, we might get him. Now, I don't remember the exact reproduction, but it's like 30 million eggs staggering. every seven days or something. It's just yep. staggering. Yeah, even when you're cleaning them, you don't want any of them fins on there because yeah, they're no, poisonous. poisonous. Justin and Travis determine what rod, reel, line, tackle, and species of fish they're targeting. Oh, it's a catfish. This was mostly redfish. Again, all we just saw was a bent rod. I'm sure y'all can see it eventually, but it's just a bent rod, and you can tell we're at the base of the bridge. Yeah, medium action, yeah. tip flex, and here's the thing. So if you're fishing those deep water schools and you're actually in like 15, 20 feet of water, underneath the bait is where the catfish are. The redfish are swimming through banging bait through the bait. And if you let the jig go past the bait, that's when you get that catfish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You see that bend in that rod? Yeah. So that shows that man actually has an idea on how to win. Yeah. Fighting low. Yeah. I mean, not no high sticking. And I tell you what, he's putting every bit of pressure you can on there. Golly, look at the tip is even like straight. It's bent so far. Yeah. Well, keep that head up. We might get him. That is a 6,000 size reel that has 40 pound power pro on it. Mm -hmm. and here's the thing. We're only fishing 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and a, like a long length of leader. The reason is because we're hooking these fish up near the surface. Now that's that is a sniper nice one. We're willing that's to show what we've been you. looking for, Justin. What stinks, some of these big red snappers like this that we're catching on a really light line, they have a super sharp gill plate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get them like up to the boat like that, like and then that spin, line yeah. gets like right behind his gill plate and just cuts it right off. And then you watch them swim away. Oh, there you go. But not that one. Grab Looks like we got him. Red snapper. That is pretty. That is pretty. All right, hit bottom. One. Two. Nope, messed it. He was biting it. So, still fishing deep. Yeah, that's probably like 80, 90 feet of water. Yeah. Something nipping at him. One, two, three. Eat it. Eat it. You got it. Yay. Ah. First one ever. It's a lionfish, and that is something that I think I've only caught like three or four on hook and line. I'm going to tell you what, Justin, that's some fine eating right there, buddy. All right, Chris, I've heard of this. We know they're here. I know the di your dive crowd's been catching these for a long time. Yeah. I got to say, that is a big one, too. I'm going to stay away. That one. thing is, a, the spines are poisonous, I know. But that is a big old lionfish. I don't want to get close to that. Aren't they thing. pretty? They are pretty, but I know they are. Uh, well, They're you don't want to get stuck with one of them fins, I can tell you, but. I know, I wouldn't even got my hand that close to them. I'll tell you what, they are some of the best eating. Well, and they are killing our reefs here. They're an invasive species. And uh, I don't remember the exact reproduction, but it's like 30 million eggs staggering. every seven days or something. It's just yep. staggering. Chris is a diver, so they go out there and spear these things all the time. So he knows more about them than I do. Dude, they're so dumb. They don't, don't really dive, move. So like, all right, really... so yeah, they're I've sitting there on the that. edge of the wreck, and you can swim right up to them and shoot them right in the face with a spear yeah. gun. Throw them in the cooler, let them die, and then clip the fins off. Oh, yeah. yeah even when you're cleaning them, you don't want any of them fins on there because yeah, they are no, poisonous. poisonous. First one I've ever seen caught on yeah. a rod and reel. Can you catch the quick shot of this fish in the water? Oh, no. I got you it. know exactly where that <laughs> is. Did you see it? Travis missed it. Tarpon. No. It was late summer. Ah. Probably September. Right out in front of the condos. Sailfish. Oh. Right in the corner, perfect. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Oops, Look, right the out. hook just fell out. Oh, too. Just fell right out. And I tell you, Jordan, 
When you drive a saddle, you always drive right at the base of that bill. Uh -huh. That bill will break. Oh, wow. All right. We were riding in, like we had gone and done something else. We were riding in, I could just see a line of bait, like a mile long. And I told him, I said, oh, I, I guarantee there. there's some selfish working that those bait balls right there. What leader are you using? 40. Yeah. Just making sure y'all, you don't have to go bigger than 40 pound test oh, on selfish. No. Matter of fact, I had a rod rigged up. That's why we're using 40. Usually if we're targeting them, I fish 30. Yeah. Jordan, you probably didn't think your first selfish would be right up here uh, about Three or four hundred yards off the beach, did you? No, never. <laughs> I figured I'd be 40 or 50 miles out. No, but you got nice clear water, lots of bait, and they come in here eating them. Yeah, I don't blame them. Yeah, we don't catch a whole lot of selfish up here in the Panhandle, but late summer, um, you know, we have tons of bait on the beach, kingfish everywhere. It actually makes it hard to fish for them because there's so many king mackerels so up here. So you bit off a bunch? Yes, because if you fish wire, you usually don't get the selfish bites. Right, because they can see it. Yep. To buy cheap hooks because you're gonna lose a bunch. <laughs> beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. I say redfish because there's two buoys in the background. Oh uh, gosh, Travis, you're so good. I'm looking at the rods. You're cheating. You're looking at the landmark. Double up, baby. <laughs> that took all of one second. Oh my gosh, dude. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of redfish under us right now. It's a redfish, they're tough. The saying, you can't see the forest for the trees is in full effect on this next clip. It's the last red fishing trip they filmed together and they're wearing the same hats from that day. Ah, oh, yeah. that's real recent because that's a new boat. I know that rain jacket. Oh, I like that hat. Huh? I know the hat. <laughs> oh, that's the same hat you have on right now, too. That's talking about me. That's the same hat. Oh, wow. <laughs> How about that? What's the coincidence there? Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to drop mine into the school. He's already on it. <laughs> I mean. You know what's funny about that? I don't even remember, but. I'm gonna say redfish. Nah. Yes. Yep, you on? Yep, yep. Up. It's your own. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say redfish because there's two buoys in the background. Oh uh, gosh, Travis, you're so good. I'm looking at the rods. You're cheating. You're looking at the landmarks. I mean, it's all about it. Oh my gosh, whatever. It is. Oh, I do remember these. <laughs> yeah. Mark yeah. them, drop them. That's right. Yeah, we just jumped from like season one to current. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people wonder why we talk about these redfish. We would protect them. We want to take care of them because of this right here. This is what makes this fish so special. <laughs> it is freezing cold out here. It doesn't matter. It's a redfish. They're tough. They're mean. They fight like crazy. They're mean. They fight like crazy. I mean, Which is funny we couldn't pick this day out because this wasn't that long ago. You know what? I know I was sitting there thinking, wow, figure out what 10 years ago was. But <laughs> three months ago. <laughs> so what happens is we film all these days fishing and we never really know how it's all going to get put together. Right? <laughs> no, you know? no clue. Honestly, I didn't even realize that this footage had not aired yet. Yeah, me neither. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to sit around and talk about these too much because that school's sitting right under us. We're spot locked. We're going to catch them again. Yes. redfish in the past in the winter? Well, it's cooled off, mm -hmm. okay? As our water temp drops, a lot of our bait has to leave our bay system. Um, I mean, as this water drops down into the 60s, um, I mean, that'll kill some bait fish. These are fish that like warm water. That's why they live in Florida, right? Well, that bait has to move out of our bay through the pass. Mm -hmm. So as that bait funnels through there, you know somebody's gonna show up to eat them. So why are they moving out to the deeper water? Because it's warmer out there. Consistency of temperature. That's it. Warmer out there. Proximity to deep water. That is the most yep. important thing when it comes to redfish. There he is. <laughs> I love it. Kind of slow to bite, but it's probably because it's 30 degrees out here. Woo, that is a big one. Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> this is like our first super strong cold front of the year. 
I mean, double up, baby! <laughs> So if you're wondering how we catch fish on a really overcast day like today. How do you do it? How do you do it? You buy the best technology there is. You buy the hummingbird. Sometimes it's that simple. Mark some fish here, drop a waypoint, and look, I don't think it's a coincidence that it happens to be in this little cup right behind that drop off. It goes from 45 feet, 51 feet here. I mean, you look at how we dialed in exactly where that school of fish was, okay? The first time I kind of lost them, so I used the side image to refine the school, drop a waypoint there, one boat network, hit a button on the screen, trolling motors in the water, spot lock. I mean, we had the tide scream in one direction, the wind blow another direction. I didn't have to figure any of that stuff out. I hit one button and we stopped dead on top of the school of fish. And then we just started catching. All right, I was gonna grab your fish for you, but I think it's every man for himself here. Oh, whoa, whoa. I'm sure, I, I remember this. Travis hangs out, lets me get rid of mine. I like warm hands. <laughs> and he just took my rod holder, so. <laughs> One fish, two fish, red fish, hopefully no blue fish. fish. <laughs> Which these blue fish get in here on this bait as well, but I'd rather see these guys in the blues. When we first saw these deer, they were headed out. We actually, we thought they were pelicans at first and they were kind of headed out. So when we realized they were deer, we came at them and kind of turned them. And now the mama actually sees the shore. So she, she's got a direction to go now. The baby's uh, lagging just a little bit. So that's why we're kind of staying with her in case we have to grab that baby and put it to the beach. Chasing the Sun has been brought to you by Minn Kota, Half Pitch Tackle, Get Out There, Fish Monkey, Performance Fishing Gloves, Panama City Inshore, These Guys Can Fish, and by Visit Panama City Beach, Real Fun Beach. Travis is not only a boat guy, he's a car guy. So it was only natural to stop by Emerald Coast Cruising for a tour. Well, the vet guys, there's a whole new generation of it people is. that just, I mean, that's the cheapest supercar you can buy that kicks everything else but. That is sexy. I like that color. Emerald Coast Cruising, great family fun hot ride event. We've been coming to Panama City Beach now, this will be six years. It's like a big family reunion with hot rods. But if you'll notice at Emerald Coast Cruising, we're all about all kind of cars. We're the newer, the older, the, 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 the Camaros, the hot rods, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the 32 Fords. We want young people coming out involved with this event. There it is, right there. A phenomenal idea, man. Something about a little cross promotion, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can fix your trucks. You take us fishing? <laughs> then, you know, the trucks always need a little love. There you go. <laughs> You will love this, bring your kids, your family. There's stuff for everyone here. I mean, we've got great bands on the stage, great food. <laughs> oh, we see man. Look at there. So this is, a, this is a riders event? At first I thought oh it was Pelican. God. This is insane. How does deer even get out this far? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we need to go on the outside, make them go back. This is actually off of the St. Andrew State Park right here. And there's two whitetails swimming straight offshore. There's no land out there. They're heading straight out into the Gulf. So like, we're riding out, and I'm thinking like, those deer are gonna die eventually. Yeah. They're not gonna find land out there. No. I think the next uh, well, point of land would be either Key West or Cuba. When we first saw these deer, they were headed out. We actually, we thought they were pelicans at first and they were kind of headed out. So when we realized they were deer, we came at them and kind of turned them. And now the mama actually sees the shore. So she, she's got a direction to go now. The baby's uh, lagging just a little bit. So that's why we're kind of staying with her in case we have to grab that baby and put it to the beach. 
Yeah, clearly their so, compass was a little too yeah. messed up. So I don't know why they were swimming out that way. Um, but anyways, so Todd was right there with me, and I was like, you know what? We've got two boats here. Let's play cowboys. Mm -hmm. So we got outside of them, got on either side, and basically just herded them, turned turn them, right them and, and pushed them all the way back up to the beach. And when they got to the beach, they were moving kind of slow. You could tell they were already pretty tired. Yeah. You cross our pass, which is full of redfish, and then you got Shell Island. You got seven miles, undisturbed, just nature. I mean, anything you want to do in nature. Go left and it's completely nature. Pretty cool spot. Best of both worlds. Y'all come check it out.